the show so they were trying on masks to see what would hide them and uh, I can tell you after surveying all the masks in the room uh, no masks work Nothing. It really doesn't. Not... it's hard to hide the hair and the bow legs you know what I mean and, uh... <laughs> it tells the story but seriously I mean this is a hell of a year this has been unbelievable season so much craziness what were your uh, favorite episodes of the season 12 and 20 those are the, those are the ones you directed yeah, the other one is right. You, uh, you got a favorite, Robert? The other 21. You're in church. Um, <laughs> uh, no, seriously, the finale. I thought the finale was amazing. Yeah! The finale was... How about that finale? Congratulations on surviving in the finale. You're the only two. Yeah, we're the only two. Yeah. It was a, it was a bloodbath. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it really was. I mean, Rowena's toast. She's, she's literally toast. Yeah, toast. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Crowley uh, sacrificed, uh, yeah. and uh, Mom is locked in another dimension with Lucifer. Kind of a dream date scenario. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, yes, yeah. I, I gotta... I gotta... This, Bobby, buddy, I gotta, buddy. I gotta do this. Buddy. I gotta do this. Bobby. Did, did you really, did you really kill Castillo? You know, we, we have said over the course of time, one thing that keeps the show fresh and why we've gone into our 13th season is we say when we, when we write these things that um, you have to go where the story takes you. Uh, and, and, and Andrew and myself and the other writers, we thought that perhaps um, Castiel's time come. Right, right. 
frankly, and I think the, the guys will back me up on this, Misha had become a bit of a prima donna. <laughs> Wanted to be number one on the call sheet. That's it. Um, so, sorry, guys. I guess I, I was back there, but they never told me to come out. But I heard my name, so I assume. This is awkward. Uh, well, this just got really weird. Yeah. yeah. You just start. You want to? You, you stop on. You want to keep crossing and go off? That? Oh no, I'm tired. I'll just rest right here. <laughs> um, oh. Okay. Well, no. I guess maybe we should just ask him. What's yeah. it like to not be on the show anymore? Yeah. Um, He's excited. <laughs> they they, they, they just had to take the story where it went, um, but I'm not going away. <laughs> uh, Is that drop my set? Do you craft services, that kind of thing? Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's nice. Let's go stalking in uh, America. Well, uh, clearly, Mish is uh, here and he's going to be back, but, but, but he is a pretty doctor. I will say, now that Misha is on stage, there are a few people that love you, but there was a really, so, so for the first time in 13 years, um, Ackles and I were like, we, we're not going to wait backstage while Kansas plays, we want to be in the audience. So they snuck us way into the back corner so we could watch while Kansas was playing, and a lovely young lady who was back there, and you know who you are, got up and started dancing, and then she's like, it turns over and here's Misha, and she's like, hey, will you take my, oh my God! <laughs> hey, will you take, <laughs> a full on sort of play. I'm a Misha Migo. Uh, so, so. Well, she has that experience, but now there's a whole bunch of people in that corner going, wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute! Jared Johnson and Misha were behind me! Ah, I'm gonna kill myself! <sighs> Baba. Hey, Richie. So let's talk about so something season, that's actually yeah, season, relevant. To season this show. 13, you know, after that finale, where do you, what's the plan from here? Where do you go from there? Uh, well, episode one, Castiel dies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll let Andrew handle that one. Sure. Well, I think for us, uh, season 12, by the end of season 11, when Mom comes back, season 12, the guys kind of had the happiest situation they could have. Mom's back, all the friends are alive, they saved the world without having to sacrifice each other, um, and season 12 was... You really messed that up, didn't you? Just yeah. killed everybody. Yeah. And then, and then season 13, we're like, well, that was a horrible idea. Like, too much, everybody's nice, and who wants that? So then we just murder, which is... <laughs> Which is really what the show's based on. It's just multiple serial homicides that everyone in this audience is witness to and probably will be indicted for. But that's a longer conversation. You're all collusion. Uh, that's right. This is collusion. Uh, there's something great about listening to Andrew talk seriously about the show while in the monitor, teeny tiny little Misha sits next to him <laughs> at the kids' table. <laughs> I love you. Can we, can we, uh, talking to the producers here, can we make this happen on set? Can he have just a little, uh, no more big cash? I didn't show? know he was allowed to sit. <laughs> I thought, I wasn't really speaking. <laughs> um, but so, so, listen, one of the big characters we saw at the end of the season, we saw Lucifer, he got himself a little boy, uh, has a son, Jack. Now this, uh, we see this character very briefly, curled up naked in the corner. Uh, which is actually ironically how Rob started on the show. <laughs> that was just in my trailer before being called the set. And I was crying. Okay. Weird. Um, but Jack is half, you know, half looser, half mortal, so there's a lot of uh, moral ambiguity at play here. Andrew, you want to talk about that? And where does this character, how's this character going to play into the season? And, and, and how do you think it will develop over time? 
Yeah, well, I mean, as you mentioned, Rich, most of how we see the character is naked. And I think it's an important element to add, you know, Dynasty's coming on, we have to compete. That's just the way I look at it. And if, so, if you were to die at the end of season 12, like somebody on this stage, would you come back naked? Um, you know, I mean, I don't know that we can afford the blur effects, honestly. <laughs> You mean, you mean because it, it's like so much of the screen would have to be? <laughs> well, I know, what you, I know what you mean. Because you have to, you'd have not just one blur, you'd have to have three blurs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, I think it's great to, to have this conversation because we all know Jared's been very honest on his Twitter feed. <laughs> And I think this is a healthy for forum to discuss this. I thought that was so brave. So brave. So accurate. I, so brave. I, I will say that after, uh, and I had, I had several friends and family members uh, call me to say like, dude, dude, are you Twittering some stuff? And I was like, huh? So, to tell you from my end of the story, um, we're out, we're in Chicago a couple days, uh, a week ago, and I go to bed about 11 o'clock, and I get some sleep, and I wake up at four o'clock to like go to the bathroom or something, and I have all these like, your Twitter was favorited, your Twitter was liked, your Twitter was favorited, your Twitter was like, my, my Twitter, like did I tweet something? And then I have it's one. Your tweet is really gaining traction? Yeah, your tweet is gaining traction, make a comment. And I was like, and so then I have one text message, not from Jensen, not from Misha, not from Bob or Andrew or Richard or Rob, it's from Matt Cohen. And I was like, Matt, is he okay? Because he's not the type to text me at like two in the morning. So I open it up and it just says, dude, Twitter. <laughs> so I opened my Twitter. I didn't realize he's fluent in Ackles. That's it. <laughs> Twitter. It may, like been, it. it may have been Twitter, dude. <laughs> or dude was, but those two words, I don't remember the order. And so then I opened my, my Twitter and I'm like, that's the last time I hand my phone over to Misha Collins. <laughs> In fairness, I think it was two years ago at Comic-Con that I posted. You were like, you grabbed my phone when, I, when we were signing, and apparently I posted on Twitter, I hate fans. Uh, <laughs> which is a great Whoa. thing to post at Comic-Con. <laughs> and for the rest of the signing, everybody was coming up like, ugh. <laughs> That's right, I remember when Panic set in, because we do a signing after this, and we're signing, and you pass, and you sign, and you pass. And then Misha, upon realizing that, so he had just put his phone on the table, and it was on, and I was like, he, 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 he. <laughs> Put it back, upon, I think, uh, I think, like, you got a bunch of phone calls or something? He was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Kind of like excuse himself. Um, yeah, you've done that to almost all of us, and that's why we were high-fiving when we saw that tweet. We were like, yeah. yes! <laughs> Someone finally got him. Yeah, that's why you didn't get a lot of warning phone calls from yeah. friends. <laughs> But uh, bringing it back, so uh, Jensen, how how will uh, Dean and Sam react to this Jack character? Um, differently. <laughs> Dude. Cool. I told you they were gonna make this hard. I begged you not to ask them questions. <laughs> Go to your no, notes. Go to your notes. There's been a lot of build-up for this. I mean, the whole season's been dealing with there Kelly is, Klein and, and it's um, obviously the the you know mom being gone, Cass, and all of this kind of uh, uh, turmoil that the the, the the brothers find themselves in. Now they have this person, this this thing, this entity, um, and in Dean's mind, just simply has to go. Um, but because uh, technically, it's half human. Um, the ever optimistic Sam Winchester uh, thinks. Was that? Half female? Half human. Half human. Um, There's a weird. I'm, I'm in a weird echo spot, so I'm catching. The vortex. Um, so they're, they're. Half female? We, uh, we, we have two different ideas of how, uh, how to handle the situation. By the Does Jared know we're doing a panel? <laughs> Just, uh... yeah. Somebody wake up at a panel for Comic-Con right now? 
Okay. Uh, anyway, but, but I yeah, tried. But yeah, that character could go either way. It could be evil. It could be. Ha have Sam and Dean encountered uh, somebody with these sort of characters before? Sort of the half Lucifer, half human. Is have they wrestled this moral dilemma previously? To this degree, it's kind of difficult, right? I'm trying to think of the last time. Well, no. This is this is the spawn of the devil. So. Right. Yeah. Which I don't know why anyone would want to see how that works out. <laughs> you know what? Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? It's a, it's a Dean's a little more practical. I have an idea. Let's shoot it in the no. face. <laughs> Sam's a bit like, that might just piss it off. Uh, I think, well, at least we'll know. <laughs> I think Sam, uh, I, kudos to Bob and Andrew and the rest of our writers. It's, it's, it's a neat, we've danced around this a couple times, but not to this degree, the whole nature versus nurture argument. Um, and so it is, Jack certainly is half Lucifer, but he's also half Kelly Klein, right? Kelly Klein was a good person, and so, um, Sam, ever the optimist, is trying to figure out what to do, and, and Dean, being Dean, uh, shoot first, ask questions later. Um, <laughs> Some things never change. And Andrew, is that a journey that, will, that Jack himself will go on in, in his sort of d development, trying to figure out which side he's, he's on? Yeah, I, mean, I think in terms of the character, you know, obviously, as Jared Jones has talked about, they've got strong opinions, I think, from Jared's point of view, especially from Sam's point of view. Sam was a character who was, as we remember from way, way back, destined to do very bad things. And, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, and still may. A lot of, a lot of years left. Um, but he's so... Uh, <laughs> or not. I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, but, uh, but, but the idea that I think Sam can kind of put himself in, put himself in that sho th those shoes a little bit better. And then for Jack himself, he's someone who I think is struggling with that and will continue to struggle with that in our version of Hell's Machu Dance. <laughs> and then uh, Misha, um, so you've been doing a lot of gardening or? <laughs> yeah, so you can, uh, you, you, you can't plant tomatoes until uh, July, so that's what I'm getting into now. Cool. That's great. Okay. Anywho. Thanks, buddy. <clears throat> um, and so, mo so mom, mom is trapped in this other dimension, this other world. Right. Uh, and so much, Robbie, of the season. So much of the season, you were there was a, the Mary character, wonderfully played by Samantha Smith. Uh, you guys had a. a service that story really well and, and the way Sam reacted to Mary and the way uh, Dean was reacting to Mary and how you guys were coping with her return, dealing with the British Mental Letters. Now that she's had this experience and has now, you know, made this move to try to do the right thing and now finds herself on the other side of this wall, of the, in this hole, how, how do Sam and Dean differ in their approach to how to handle that situation? Um, Dean thinks she's um, gone, that uh, she went through the rift. It's a rift, Rich, not a hole. Oh. <laughs> I was just making sure you read the notes. Okay. Um, she went through the rift, the hole, um, with Lucifer, and the whole rift closed. And Dean is pretty sure that that's, that's curtains for mom. And, and while he's bereft over that, uh, he's ready to accept that. Sam thinks, no, she went through alive. We've been on the other side of this rift. Um, he's holding on to the fact that she could still be alive, and that's a bit of a, it's a, it's a problem between the guys, uh, because Sam's uh, mission in the beginning part of uh, season 13 is let's find mom, and uh, Dean's idea is we have bigger fish to fry, mom's dead, you're just gonna have to come to that realization. Um, spoiler alert, mom is not dead. I told you. Right, I told you. <laughs> Me. Dean's kind of a Debbie Downer at the beginning of the season. <laughs> Dean Downer. Wah, wah. Let's kill Jack. Mom is dead. Everybody's dead. Uh, yeah, good. I didn't know mom wasn't dead. I like that. Read the scripts. <laughs> He hasn't read a script since season seven. <laughs>
that's what we're on, right? Is season seven? <laughs> And, and so, in the Mary storyline, by the way, Mary, who is in, with Lucifer, is on the other side of the rift, uh, is, uh, she's got her own journey. She's got her own challenges to face now. And Andrew, how do we see that playing out for her? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of Mary, obviously, she came back. She came back with a very, you know, a first very kind of spot out. She didn't ask to come back. She was brought back. She was sent back. It took her a while to find her footing, I think, you know, with the world at large and more specifically with her sons. And by the end of the season, I think they were, everyone was in a very good place. Uh, she's been lost, you know, over on the other side, here she's got someone who, as far as Mary's concerned, she made the sacrifice knowingly. She went through that rift knowingly. Like, I don't know that she is necessarily, you know, that, that's something she's kind of, I think, comes to terms with. That doesn't mean she's not active. That doesn't mean she doesn't want to make the world a better place, because the world she's gone into is far worse than the world in which our guys live day to day. And then I also think, you know, one of the interesting things about Jack is that, as we know, the only person that's ever opened a rift in this world is Jack. So if Jack is the key to getting back, one, how do you convince them to do that? Can you convince them to do that? And do you want them to do that? Because you're just opening a hole to an apocalypse, uh, world in which has been ravaged by the apocalypse. You know, you hope that you hope that door is one way, but maybe it's not. And so I think those are all things everyone's kind of struggling with. Yeah, and I think you brought up a good point that she did it knowingly. So Mary sacrificed herself for the good of the Winchesters. Crowley sacrificed himself for the good of the Winchesters. Did anybody else die in the finale? Not that the big did not sacrifice themselves um, for for somebody else's good. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I'm willing to read recaps, Twitter, if you want to let me know. But eh. um, no, I mean a big part of the final episode was you had all these people, and really a lot of part of the season, you had a lot of people who came, to, and it was really about how Samity impacts each other, but also other people. So you saw how they impacted other hunters. You saw the, how they impacted, you know, Crowley and Rowena and Castiel. And so a lot of part, a lot of, you know, what ended up being our last two episodes, a lot of people, Jody Mills, a lot of people stepping up and essentially, you know, do, helping the Winchesters in the way the Winchesters have helped so many people. And that was really important to us, is to build a sense of community. And then because it's supernatural, you tear it all down. But, you know, over the course of the season, that was really what it was about. And then speaking of this uh, apocalypt apocalyptical? Uh, uh, apocalyptical? I think that's a piece of exercise equipment. I was on that. I spent 20 minutes on the apocalyptical this morning. Um, speaking of this uh, apocalyptical world, um, what, 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 happened, what happened was, uh, so we saw Bobby, who... Yeah. And, what this other world seems to do is uh, it's, a, it's another uh, alternate reality. So it's right. Bobby, but it's, a, it's Bobby living a different life. He doesn't know the boys. Right. So is this world, could that open up for other characters to reappear the same way? Do you have anybody specific? I mean, well, it's like, not like... Sounds, it sounds more like a pitch than a question. Well, I'm just curious, does God... Like, how does, where does God... Am I coming back, Bob? <laughs> You are God of the universe, but it's a really big universe. Uh, you, you know, it's possible. You know, it depends how you do it here today. <laughs> oh crap! Uh, Gabriel? Yeah, I don't think so. Come on! What does that mean? We'll do our, our own spin-off, Rich. Fine, Baba. So, but, but, so that world could open up uh, to bring some other characters back. Like Definitely that. could, yes. By the way, by the way, because we love to tease Rich, and we don't know if Gabriel, I mean, love that character, but I think for first and second time directing, Richard Spade's direction on this show has been just fantastic, and we're just so happy with that. Um, can you uh, tease any characters that will be back, or no, we, we're not doing that yet? Um, I think... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Sorry. by tease, he means give them a hard time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, poke at people, I like, know. Um, I think we've got some cool characters coming back, both in our world and in the Apocalypse world. So that's the fun of it, is, you know, we've got some people coming back like, you know, um, Missouri Mosley's gonna come back for us for the first time in a long time. <laughs> You know, obviously, uh, Jody would be back for us, and some other people like that. And then in Apocalypse World, uh, without getting any spoilers, um, some people who have been uh, long dead on our show are less dead in Apocalypse World, and much different characters. 
That's it's more butter. Yeah. That's promising. So my phone that hasn't changed. Shift <laughs> FYI. Very shifty. So, you know, this is, we're talking about a show that's been on since half this room wasn't born. We were going 13 years into a show. And the thing I think that makes Supernatural special in the world of television for not just us who are involved with it, but also for you folks who watch it, is that it continues to reinvent itself. It continues to be interesting, tell fun stories, tell engaging stories that are emotional and, and connect with the audience. And that's all, if I may say, driven by the fabulous performances of you two gentlemen who continue to do outstanding work. He just came along and slowed it down for a while, but now he's gone. And we can get back to the business of making quality TV. So for you, for your journey, this is not really funny anymore. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. Um, but if we can be reflective for a moment about, and Bob, you've been with the show since the beginning as well. So the question's for all three of you. Season one to now, how has your experience been and how, how has your relationship with both the show and your, in your case, Jensen and Jared, your characters, how has it evolved over this long period of time? That's an easy question. Um, how was the last 13 years of your life? <laughs> Great, thanks for asking. Yeah. Thank you, good night. Thank you, good night. Uh, that, that it is hard to, to you know, speak quickly about uh, the experience that we've had. Um, obviously, it's the longest job I've ever held. Um, and, and I guess one of my favorite things, one of many things that I love about doing this job is that um, we're never doing the same thing twice. Uh, every day is a, a new experience. We're telling different stories. There's new characters to introduce and uh, old characters to finally get rid of. And <laughs> It's that kind of crappy acting that got you fired. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's, I mean, look, uh, it, it, it's been wonderful. It, the experience has been great. Um, you know, we've we've had uh, we've had our ups and downs. We've had uh, we've had. Uh, Great seasons we've had, maybe not so great seasons. It's been, it's an ebb and flow, and, uh, but I think through it all, uh, it is, uh, it has been wonderful, and I'm very proud to be a part of something that's lasted this long. Yeah, um, I, I agree with everything you just said. Um, I think for me also, it was kind of specifically. Yeah. And it's hard, it's difficult for me to identify the chicken and the egg. I, it, not that I would even know which came first anyway. Well, one is when, a bird. There's the one. <laughs> one is the, the other little Twitter thing. It really moves. Uh, that's right, got it. That's what it is. Uh, oh, the hell? No, it's, it's a, uh, but Jared was a lot. Jared and Sam were sort of similar to season one. Uh, in that I was like, man, this is hard work. Like, it's, this is difficult to be uh, up in Vancouver. I had no friends. I was living in a hotel room. We didn't know if we had a job for more than two months because we hadn't been picked up for a season. We hadn't even really aired yet, so we didn't have any, we didn't have this family, which is badass, that we have now. That's a yeah. And there was nothing, Twitter didn't exist. I don't mean maybe it existed, but it wasn't like, oh, well, I'm getting support from my friends that aren't here. Uh, iPhones didn't exist. iPhones, that's right. It came out like season one, right? I know, jeez. <laughs> Love you back. So, uh, so it, 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 it gradually, as the show has gone on, both Sam and Jared have realized that this is life, and life is pretty great. It can be, it can have its ebbs and flows, to borrow what he was talking about, its ups and downs, um, its good days and its bad days, but it's wonderful, and to look out here after 13 years and see how many thousand people jumping around and dancing and Kansas is here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I met my wife on the show. We have three kids. Right. She's somewhere out there. Um, Same. But it's changed a lot. <laughs> 
Um, can, yeah, I'm talking, can I add one one thing? Even though I wasn't there at the beginning, we were talking on. Um, I'm, I know I'm new, and, and now I'm gone. Um, but <laughs> we were talking about this on Friday. Um, someone asked us about a question about.